Today on Nerd Out, peer-to-peer -peer updates. Welcome back to Nerd Out, the show where we take a look at Cardano and we break it down, but we don't dumb it down. Today we're talking about some of the latest peer-to-peer, P2P updates that are happening on the Cardano network with the latest node versions. So without further ado, let's dive in. So what is peer-to-peer? -peer? On Cardano, when we started out with Shelly, everyone manually created a topology file to point to the various peers they wanted to connect to, to send blocks around and move transactions around the network. Uh, this was important. All connections are unidirectional in this mode. So if you make an outgoing connection, only certain things travel on that connection. If somebody makes an incoming connection to you, only certain things travel on that. So when a connection comes into your node, you are allowed to send blocks out to them. If you connect out, you're allowed to send transactions out. So certain things only travel on certain directions on these unidirectional connections. Uh, back in this day, it was a little bit difficult to find peers. So Marcus Guffler uh, from Clio One Pool, he created a topology updater tool. This is a centralized solution, but it allowed everybody who was running nodes to kind of report, hey, I'm up, I'm running, I'm able to accept peers. And then other people could connect to that same service and say, hey, give me a good list of active peers. And so that kind of helped everybody build their top topology files. Um, that's still running today. Some people still, uh, still use it. Then we moved on to the early days of P2P where we were testing relays only. We were keeping our block, block producer nodes in non-P2P mode. Um, in early P2P, it looks at the ledger for registered relays. Uh, that when you register a pool, usually you register some relays that people can connect to. And that's, uh, that's what the node uses for making its outgoing connections. So where are we at with different protocol versions and their node-to-node -node or P2P support? Uh, so we started off uh, in version 9. There were some Babbage updates here. Everything was still kind of in unidirectional mode. And then in version 10, we added duplex connections. So that, that means whenever your node makes an outgoing connection, you can send blocks out on that connection as well if the other side supports the same version 10 as you. If they're down to 9, then your, nine, your node will run only unidirectional connections to that particular peer. So if you have enough good outgoing connections that are all... Um, version 10 or above, then, then you're good to go. Uh, in version 11, they started adding some code for some peer sharing. So this would be sharing peers between nodes uh, on the fly instead of having to look at the ledger registered relays for that. Uh, there were some bugs in, in 11 and 12, and they were making some more Conway updates in 12. And then in version 13, where we're at today, with node version 8.7.3, this is this is fixing some various uh, peer sharing bugs. Um, I would not turn on peer sharing just yet. Maybe in in test mode on some relays you could do that. But that's where we're at today. Is uh, these different versions? They're negotiated whenever one node does a handshake to another. So like my node could reach out to another node and say handshake. I can support version 13 all the way down to maybe 7. And then the other node on the other side will respond with the highest version that they're also able to support. So that's kind of a handshake negotiation between the nodes. And based on that version, you know what, uh, what stuff you support. So if both nodes handshake at version 13, you get all the capabilities, all the bi-directional capabilities, um, all the peer sharing, all of that stuff. So it's important for if you haven't upgraded your node uh, to 8.7.3, you'll want to start moving that direction pretty soon. I think we're around 25% of the network has moved over so far. So where are we at today? Uh, relays can run fully P2P. Um, you can go ahead and set that up. And I would start moving block produ producers over to P2P at this time. Um, 
I would set it up where you're using more of a static topology, where you're only pointing to your relays, of course, for protection reasons. Um, and to do that, to set it up in the static mode, you're going to want to use the parameter in your topology file, use ledger after slot negative one. And that will make it not look at the ledger for finding peers at all. It's only going to look at your topology file for finding peers. Um, it's still probably a good idea to point your relays back at your block producer, even though technically all of these connections are bidirectional and your block should still get out. So if you're really brave, uh, you could, in theory, firewall off your block producer entirely and only have outgoing connections from it since they are fully duplexed bidirectional connections. Um, again, my recommendation right now is still have the connections pointing both ways just to make sure everything is, is really good in connection while we're uh, get more time testing block producers in P2P mode. So here's an example of a topology file, what it would look like on a block producer. So your local routes, this is where you're going to put your own relays. Um, so outgoing connections to your relays. Um, I would still leave advertise false for now. That's that peer sharing uh, flag, whether or not you advertise, whether the peers are um, able to be shared. And then valency is your number of relays that you have. So if you have three relays, then you'd put three there, etc. And then public routes, I would shut those entirely off, just leave it as an empty list on a block producer, and then use ledger after slot negative one. That's kind of the setup I would recommend using. Uh, so now let's talk a little bit about hot backup. So now that we have uh, bi-directional connections, things get a little more complicated for how, how you can run a hot backup block producer. Uh, background on me, I live in Florida. I run a bare metal stake pool. Florida is the lightning capital of the world. So the power will go out at times. Um, so I need to have things like battery backups and generators and all that stuff just to make sure that everything stays up and running. So my battery backups, I've got a huge battery backup that can keep things running for three hours during most power outages. Uh, most of the time I just stay up on battery power during any power outage. I do have a generator that can keep things running for several weeks. However, that wastes a lot of gas and is dirty and nasty and loud for my neighbors. Um, so instead of using a generator, typically it's easier just to have a cloud-based node somewhere else take over the block production if it sees that the relays that are in front of my block producer, my block producer is unreachable. So previously in non-P2P mode, uh, Martin Lang from Atata Stake Pool kind of invented this approach. Uh, when all the connections were unidirectional, your blocks would never get out from a block producer if it had no incoming connections. So on a backup relay, you just, um, point the backup relay into the, the block producer, and by default, the block producer would set up a, a firewall rule that said, allow no incoming connections. And that firewall rule prevented any blocks made by the backup from getting out to the network and causing forks. So in standard mode, you would run your normal relays, your primary block producer, those relays would be pointed at, at the uh, block producer and then this firewall rule was in place. And then on the backup block producer, you'd run a script to continually run like CNCLI ping or Cardano ping to ping your relays and make sure they were reachable. If they ever go down, like in my case, if I lost power, these relays would go down, the ping would fail, and then that script would remove the block on the firewall so that my backup relay could start being the one that would get my blocks out to the network. Now this method, once we have bi-directional connections, is not really going to work anymore because any connection that my block producer needs to make out to this relay to like keep up to date with the tip, um, that also my blocks could flow out on that and then I'd be making blocks from both a backup and a primer at the same time, which is not what we want to do. So the IOG team has uh, known that we needed some type of capability 
for turning on and off block production production on a backup node. And this is the, the technique they came up with. There's a new flag when you start your node and you can say non-producing node. And what that does is it starts the block producer uh, without checking for leadership slots, even if you supplied, you know, the Shelly credentials that you would normally supply to a block producer, not a relay. So if you ever want to turn on block production on this backup node, um, all you have to do is rename the files that these um, credential parameters were pointing to. So make it so the node doesn't see them. If you just like rename them to, you know, dot backup, or I think I call mine dot standby. And then once you've done that, you send a HUP signal, a hang up signal to the node. I'll show you how to do that in a minute. And what that does is it causes the block producer to check two things. It checks your topology file. So if you've ever changed your topology file um, to connect to a new node or a new relay, whatever, it'll start connecting to that new stuff. And it will also check to see if these files are now added or missing. Um, if either of those are the case, it will, um, if files are missing, it will stop doing the leadership checks. It'll basically turn it into a regular old node and not a block producer. If the files are there, then the node starts doing leadership checks and will make blocks. So here's an example script I run. Um, I set this up on Chrome, Chrome to run once a minute. Um, and so I put in paths to all my credential files here. So path to CAS, VRF, and the opsert key. And then I also give it names for the standby file. Actually, there's a bug here. So these last two lines should say standby and standby. Um, for that, I will have to fix that on the gist later. And then we have to get the process ID of the service uh, that's running the node of, of the block producer node and then what we do is we do some checks against ekg to see if we're actually in, in currently in a block producing mode and we're checking this node not leader this is a count value of how many times your node um, checks to see whether it's a leader or not so if you're in a non-leading mode that value will sit there and do nothing. If you are doing leadership checks, um, this value will increment every time it checks once a second and will notice that you're not a leader. So I do a three second sleep here. So unless I make three blocks three seconds in a row, which is nearly impossible, um, if I am in leadership mode, this value will increase. And that's what I'm checking here is to make sure if the number two value is greater than the leader one value, that means this block producer is active and trying to make blocks. Otherwise, it is not trying to make blocks. So I'm in standby mode in that case. Uh, the next thing the script does is it runs C and CLI ping uh, against my first relay. If it sees an error, in other words, it can't reach it, then I will go and try the second relay after 10 seconds. So I'll give it 10 seconds just in case there was a network glitch, whatever. Um, then it will try the second relay because if you can see the second relay, then I'm still good. I don't want to go active mode on this backup. Um, then if I am currently not leading, so in other words, both the relays errored and I am not currently trying to make blocks, then I will turn things on and try to make blocks. So I'm copying the standby file back to the active file uh, for each of those three three files and then I'm sending a kill that's dash s hup signal to the process ID that the service is running on and then the final step here is I'm blasting out an email just so I know hey you should know something happened and you can either do this with email you can send it to you know a text alert service if you want a text on your phone to say hey you you went into backup mode just so you know and are aware something's happening here and then if there were no errors um, so if I do end up in this mode I just exit the script um, if there were no errors pinging my relays I have to make sure that if I was in a failover mode I shut this guy down 
Um, so I want to return to standby mode in that case. So if I was leading, then I want to copy my standby files um, or move my files back to the standby files and then again send the hub signal and let myself know with the notification that, hey, failover was disabled, I'm back in standby mode. Um, and I'll provide a, a gist for this. Um, here's the link to the gist. I will also put it in the description down below if you want to set something like this up on your own block producer node. And that's all I've got. That's the update on P2P. Um, definitely start getting your nodes updated to 873. We will probably have a couple more node versions before the next uh, hard fork, the Chang hard fork into the Conway era. Uh, that's all I've got. Thanks a lot for watching. Nerd out.